This is ABC 15 Mornings. Thursday morning and still no winner. When the count is finished, we believe we will be the winner. Is the election headed to the judicial system? We'll be going to the U.S. Supreme Court. We want all voting to stop. Why the votes in Arizona could be the most important. We know that there is a storm ahead of us, yet it's not here. The governor having to focus on more than just the election. Are hospitals ready for what's ahead over the next seven weeks? It's no longer just toilet paper. New this morning, the 10 items that are now in short supply. Help on the shelf names, what he wants for Christmas, how good he's been. Plus Santa and some Christmas cheer. Since after this week, we all need a reason to smile. Don't we? <laughs> right? Totally. Oh my goodness, it has been a very long week. We are not even to Friday. We do have a lot to get to. New numbers coming in overnight, updating where Arizona is. We don't have an official tally, but we are getting closer. Kaylee O'Kelly here in studio along with Nick Saletti. Yeah, we say good morning to you. Happy Friday Eve to everybody. Let's talk a little weather. That most accurate forecast getting warm today. Meteorologist Iris Hermosillo is standing by with a sneak peek so you can plan out your Thursday. Maybe a tank tops in yeah, order? Yeah, I think that might be a good idea. It's starting out cool now, but by this afternoon, record setting warmth. Look for a high of 97 degrees in Phoenix. Not only will that beat really shatter today's record high temperature, which stands at 93, set on this date back in 2007, but we're also talking potentially the highest temperature we've ever recorded in the month of November. Currently, the highest we've gone is 97, 96 rather, but today again, I'm forecasting 97 degrees for a high this afternoon, so it is going to be toasty today, but this morning comfortable. If you want to get outside for a walk, even a little chilly in some spots, upper 50s right now in Chandler. That's one of the cooler areas. Glendale, you're checking in right at 64. It's also 64 in Goodyear. Good morning to you in Mesa. You're in the low 70s and in Phoenix at Sky Harbor, low 60s now, so a comfortable morning, but a quick warm up upper 80s by lunchtime. It'll be warmer by lunchtime today than it was yesterday, and then our high peaks at 97 degrees, but those weekend changes, they're still on the way and I've got an update on rain and snowfall forecast for you in just a few minutes. But now sending it over to Chelsea Davis watching our morning drive. Good morning, Iris. Thanks so much. Yeah, I don't know about you or anybody at home, but I am just wanting pumpkin pie like now. That's where I'm at. All right, I'm watching the roadways and things are looking good with our accident law group traffic maps. Yeah, the east side of town, we just have that small crash that's still in the clearing stages for US 60 westbound near Ellsworth, but it's not on the main lanes. It's not affecting the flows at all for our valley freeways. All of them from the east side of town are clear, even into and out of Maricopa on State Route 347. From the west side of town, you're just going to see your normal delays on I-10 approaching the stack and then also I-17 around the Durango Curve, traveling around 20 miles per hour for both of those. So factor in a couple extra minutes there. North Valley, completely clear though. Those freeways are not slow by any means and desert drive times for the most part are still below average or average for this time of day. Back to you. It's likely a lot of you seeing this on the social media feeds overnight. Protests happening all because of the election. This the scene last night at the Maricopa County Recorder's Office. And at one point we're told some demonstrators were trying to get into the building. But Maricopa County Sheriff's deputies were also able to defuse that situation. Yeah, the crowd started to go home around midnight. More protests are expected to happen today and possibly throughout the weekend. We want to let you know that we did get some new numbers overnight into the early morning hours, showing the races here in Arizona are getting tighter, and that does include the race for the White House. Yeah, so Mark Thompson is joining us right now, live from home, social distancing this morning. Mark, both presidential candidates looking to our state to uh, try to push them over the edge could be critical on the road to 270. Absolutely, Nick, and we always knew that Arizona was going to be a key battleground state, and here we are. And ever since Arizona was called for Joe Biden on Tuesday night, the White House has claimed that that call was made too soon. And you mentioned some new numbers. The new results from overnight show Biden leading by only about 68,000 votes. Of the remaining ballots to be counted, the president would need to win 60% to turn Arizona red. That includes over 35,000 provisional ballots from Maricopa and Pima counties, which have historically trended Democrat. Now, with lawsuits being filed in a number of states, Chris Christie, the former governor of New Jersey, says without Arizona, the race is likely over.
And I can tell you that the attitude at the White House tonight is maniacally focused on Arizona from a political perspective. That's where they think they can break through and create a new conversation over the next couple of days. And so that's where they're going to be looking to do it. If they don't do it in Arizona, I think they know that they've they've got a real problem then and they're really, really swimming upstream. But that's where they're focused right now. <clears throat> Governor Ducey in Arizona is focused on that. And Chris Christie says that he disagrees with all the lawsuits that are being filed in other states. He says that we've got to let the process play out, let the votes be counted before we judge whether the system is flawed. Reporting live this morning, Mark Thompson, ABC 15, Arizona. Back to you. Yeah, Mark, absolutely. I mean, at this point, there really isn't anything anybody can do other than let people count the ballots and make sure that, you know, everything goes as smoothly as possible. Mark, thank you. Well, here's where things stand on a national level right now. We're still waiting to get final results from key states like Pennsylvania, Nevada, Georgia, and North Carolina, and also Arizona here, too. That one shouldn't be shaded right now because we don't know which way Arizona is going to go, even though the Associated Press did call the race for Arizona. Arizona, still plenty of time to decide what happens. Once all the ballots are cast, both candidates are expected to pass a record amount of votes set by former President Barack Obama back in 2008. Some other races have tightened overnight. The Maricopa County Attorney's Race, Republican incumbent Alistair Adele now ahead a very narrow lead for Democratic challenger Julie Gunnigal. It's about 4,000 votes here. Adele currently recovering in the hospital. We're told she's in stable condition after going emergency surgery to address a bleed in her brain. Also the race for Arizona's Congressional District 6. So this is parts of the Northeast Valley, Scottsdale, Fountain Hills, Carefree. Another Republican incumbent, David Schweikert, has a slight lead right now against Dr. Hiro Tepernini. That's his Democratic challenger here. Again, this one very uh, narrow split, though, 51% to 49%. Of course, we're still waiting to get all of those yes. ballots counted, so can't call mm -hmm. anyone yet. That one has been uh, close. Back and forth, yeah. too. Yep. Yeah, it yep. really has been. Okay, so the question, we want to answer the questions that you have, right, including this one. How many ballots still need to be processed here in Maricopa County, and how much longer is it going to take? Our elections team coverage continues this morning with Carla Navarrete live at the Maricopa County Election Center. Uh, Carla, this, the scene of a, a lot of people there overnight uh, demanding that the votes be counted there. Yeah, they were here last night, but you know, right now it's pretty quiet. So I can answer the question as to how many ballots roughly Maricopa County says they have still to count. And that is 338,000. We don't know exactly though when all of those ballots will be finalized uh, and counted right for right now. Now, because of last night's demonstrations, there will be extra security here at the Maricopa County Elections Department. They are trying to stress also their transparency in this process. They do provide live video feeds inside the building where people can watch all of the tabulating happening inside and party representatives and observers are present providing oversight and no matter what is going on outside officials here inside are focused on one thing. I mean, I do worry about any potential violence in the streets, but we need to count every single vote. It's important that these election officials are able to make sure that they're able to count their votes without any intimidation, any harassment. People can use their freedom of, of speech to do that and fight for their candidate, and, and I respect that. But we need to make sure that every vote is counted here in Maricopa County. And we do expect another batch uh, in about 12 hours at 7 o'clock tonight. We should know more information from the Maricopa County Elections Department as far as how many ballots have been tabulated. For now, reporting live in downtown, I'm Carla Navarrete, ABC 15, Arizona. All right, Carla, thank you for that. Meantime, in the race for the Arizona Corporation Commission, Democrat Anna Tovar leading all six candidates vying for three open spots, followed by Republican incumbent Leah Marquez-Peterson and Jim O'Connor. Now, the commission decides everything from how much utilities can charge you to the type of energy they sell. And after years of debating about clean energy, last week in a bipartisan vote, they approved a long-delayed update to our state's renewable and clean energy requirements. But with two of those commissioners on the way out, there's no guarantee that those rules will be made permanent, we're being told. This commission that's four Republicans and one Democrat, you know, has passed a really important clean energy package. Going forward, no matter who's on the commission, I think, Clean energy is important to Arizonans, and we're going to work with anyone that's on the commission to uh, continue to move that forward. 
So two of the Republicans who approved the clean energy standards are leaving the commission at the end of this year. Well, politics created maybe a divide between you and some of your loved ones. Next on ABC 15 Mornings, the first steps you can take towards healing those relationships. We've heard it over and over again just how important it is to get a flu shot this year. So where do the numbers lie? Coming up, we'll break it all down and the big concern from doctors as coronavirus cases continue to rise. Talking about the coronavirus this morning, the CDC is saying that it wants to develop a strategy for testing asymptomatic people. The nationwide seven day average of new daily cases stands at more than 86,000. CDC officials say knowing when asymptomatic people are infected could help case numbers actually and get them under control. Arizona surpassing 250,000 confirmed COVID-19 cases. And as we head into flu season, right now is the time to get a flu shot. This morning, our John Genovese joins us live to talk more about this free event happening in Peoria. Yeah, good morning, Kaylee. And this is a totally free event, whether or not you have insurance here at Sunrise Mountain High School. It's happening from three to five this afternoon. This is near 83rd Avenue in Deer Valley. And as you mentioned, so important, especially right now, given where we stand in Arizona, the state now passing 250,000 COVID-19 cases with more than 6,000 deaths. And when you look at COVID and the flu, these are both respiratory illnesses. They both can have similar symptoms like a fever, shortness of breath, coughing, and difficulty breathing. And they both are a big risk for people over 50, especially those with underlying conditions. Now, last year, a CDC report found only around 43% of Arizonans got the flu vaccine, and we've seen hundreds of deaths each year. And now doctors are pleading for more people to do their part. It's not only to protect um, yourself, but it's to protect those around you that are more likely to have poor outcomes. So that's a dad, that's a mom, that's an uncle, you know, that's a friend that's older. So and also infants that are less than six months that aren't eligible to get their flu shot. Again, this event happening from three to five this afternoon. If you can't make it or maybe it's just too far, you should reach out to your insurance company. Most will cover the entire cost of the flu vaccine and you can get one at most grocery stores, big box stores and drug stores as well. And guys, some of them will even give you coupons and discounts if you need some extra motivation. ABC 15 Desert Drive Time sponsored by Accident Law Group. Thanks so much, John. Speaking of discounts, it's actually Retail Me Not's cash back day starting today and tomorrow, 48 hour flash sale, and you can get some money back while you shop too. So just letting you know, watching the Accident Law Group traffic uh, maps now, taking off the smart shopper hat, putting on the traffic hat. We are looking at mostly green flows, especially on the east side of town. Even with this crash that's on US 60 in the westbound direction near Ellsworth, it's been there a while. The tow truck's on scene, it's off to the shoulder, not causing any delays at all. The other freeways for the East Valley are clear. West side of town clear as well, but it is a little slow making your way into downtown Phoenix. The desert drive time has improved a bit. You're traveling between 20 and 50 miles per hour, making your way into downtown versus just 20 miles per hour, which is where we were about 10 minutes ago. I-17 southbound around the Durango curve, uh, curve, a higher volume of traffic there as well at this point, but you just need a couple extra minutes and you'll be set. North Valley, no issues. Green flows, even if you wanted to get up north, you travel on I-17, start your weekend early, you look clear as of right now. But I'll let you know what it looks like in the next few minutes, and I'll show you some desert drive times in a few. But right now, let's go ahead and check in with meteorologist Iris Hermosillo. Good morning, Iris. Good morning, and let's talk about conditions in case you're getting ready to head out the door. We are waking up to clear conditions across the Valley of the Sun. Can't see the sun or the light of day much just yet as we look live with our South Mountain camera. Our sunrise doesn't happen until after 650 now here this morning, so we still have a little ways to go before we start to see that light of day. But if you're going to be heading out between now and around sunrise, know the temperatures are a little chilly in some spots. Cool really across the Valley, but some of the cooler spots Gilbert down to 55 degrees right now. The Santan Valley 
Valley also waking up to temperatures in the upper 50s at 58. It's 59 in Chandler, Maricopa. You're right at 58 degrees. Upper 50s in Ahwatukee and Levine checking in at just 57 degrees. Upper 50s for Surprise, 62 our temperature in Glendale, and we are milder as we typically are along our foothills. Remember that colder, dense air settles at the surface or at the valley floors rather in the valley floors, so you'll typically see those cooler temperatures across the lower elevations in the mornings and the milder conditions or slightly warmer temperatures over some of those spots that are the higher terrain, some of our foothills. 63 hour temperature at Phoenix Sky Harbor. It's 51 degrees in Prescott, 54 in Kingman, and we're just above freezing in Flagstaff at 33 degrees right now. So cold in the high country, Window Rock even dropping into the 20s this morning. So I wanted to show you the cool temperatures this morning because get ready. We are in for a record setting Thursday, a high today of 97 degrees in Phoenix, all the way into the upper 70s in Prescott, and just a couple degrees shy of 90 today in Kingman, upper 60s for Flagstaff, and check out Yuma, one degree shy of 100 in Yuma today. Across the valley, we won't be too far from the triple digits with a high of 97 in Queen Creek, Gilbert, Tempe, and Ahwatukee, upper 90s in Peoria, 97 today in Goodyear, low 90s in Anthem and in Cave Creek. So here's how we're going to get there. Again, our sunrise happens at 651. Temperatures will be in the low 60s through then, then upper 60s by around 8 a.m. We'll be warming into the low 80s by 10 o'clock, upper 80s by lunchtime, and 90s through the afternoon with a high today of 97 degrees. You're going to start to notice a few high clouds this afternoon and more this evening, but we're staying dry today. 97 puts us well above the 30 year average, but also well above today's record high. So that's why I'm saying today is going to be a record setting day, but 97 would also mark the highest temperature temperature we have ever seen in the month of November. We're also going to add another day to our tally. We are at 188 days so far this year with highs at 90 degrees or higher. We're going to add two days to that tally today and tomorrow, but that may be it for this year. We may be done with the 90s. It really looks like we're going to be done with the 90s after tomorrow because we've got a huge break in those temperatures coming this weekend and next week looks pretty cool pretty much all week long. Now we're going to talk more about these rain and snow chances, but know that this weekend will be much cooler, more breezes, and there's a chance for showers and storms in the valley. That back there, Iris, thank you. Oh, no matter who wins the election, there's no denying the country is divided, but that's no reason to stop being friends or to stop talking to family members. Psychology experts say talk to each other face to face. We all have different opinions, of course, but that doesn't mean that you can't repair a relationship. Whether you had mutual interest in in sports or hobbies or, um, you know, you can engage about grandchildren. Um, there are a lot of things to connect on besides politics, and sometimes it's good to refocus on those things and leave the political issues aside. Often our perception is that people are mostly on the extremes, but according to these experts, the truth is most people are somewhere in the middle. The coronavirus pandemic is impacting shopping habits, and while the panic buying hasn't stopped, we're going to tell you what people are trying to stock up on. Also, more election coverage for you on this Thursday morning. Arizona in the national spotlight, and so is our state's top official in charge of the ballot counting process. We are talking with Arizona's Secretary of State, Katie Hobbs. It's almost 624. Eight months ago, you'll remember we saw the panic buying because of the pandemic. Store shelves cleared of cleaning products, and now so many other items are becoming really tough to find. Remember the run on toilet paper? Well, now shoppers are frustrated by other shortages. Sometimes bleach, uh, paper towels. Well, that's it. The Clorox wipes we couldn't find. The list of top products still in short supply begins with Lysol and Clorox wipes. Schools are snapping them up. Paper towels. The Wall Street Journal says manufacturers have not increased production as much as they have for things like toilet paper. And bicycles. A lot of stores are sold out. The bike we found right now is like uh, $2,000. Demand has been through the roof this year. And a lot of people pulling old bikes out of barns, garages, and trying to get those fixed up. Fourth on the list, that would be appliances. It started with freezers and it's gradually gotten in any appliance category, so a microwave range, anything. For that, you can blame plant shutdowns and shipping delays. Number five, swimming pools. Laptops come in at number six on this list because of remote learning. Number seven, 
coins. And that's a real problem at laundromats. Our customers use uh, quarters to run these machines. There are also shortages on things like yeast and baking flour, as well as jars for canning and lids. And finally, aluminum cans for beer and soda, because so many more people are drinking at home instead of at restaurants. And if we can't get the cans, then we can't put anything out. And that is why you might be seeing more soda bottles appearing on grocery store shelves. Helping Arizona families get a Thanksgiving meal, St. Mary's Food Bank is putting out the call for turkey donations this morning. The organization says they need about 8,000 turkeys to reach their distribution goal. They're accepting donations through November 25th at both St. Mary's locations, one in Phoenix and the other one in Surprise. Well, it looks like people are getting into the holiday spirit. Mariah Carey's hit song, All I Want for Christmas is You, is seeing a surge in the number of streams being downloaded. Yeah, according to Billboard, the song was streamed more than a million times on Sunday and Monday alone. Maybe you've already been hearing it. And people just want to feel good. Absolutely, yeah. Get it. Yeah, holiday season kicked off early. Next at 630 as the vote counting continues in the race for the White House, President Donald Trump is looking at some legal options when it comes to the voting process and maybe even the results here in Arizona.